Hello and welcome to the biggest change in gynae and gynae oncology in 2023. The CO endometrium, the carcinoma endometrium staging has been revolutionized by FIGO in a recent paper published and today I am going to simplify this paper for you. So without much ado, let us first see what is the new 2023 FIGO staging of the cancer of the endometrium looks like and it's a very busy slide I know just appreciate don't try to read everything you can screenshot and keep but um, if you want this picture is shared at my Instagram account Dr. Shunabo so you can find it there also you can um, it's not freely available in the internet right now so just understand that FIGO 2023 classification of uh, staging of CA endometrium is a very complex one. It's not complex once I make it simple for you, but it was the simplest classification. But now it has uh, there has been a lot of things added to it. So let us see the old staging first. So CA endometrium staging was pretty simple. This is uterus, this is endometrium and these are the tubes. So stage 1 was tumor confined to uterus, stage 1A, stage 1B, stage 1A, limited to endometrium or less than 50% of myometrial invasion. B is more than 50% myometrial invasion not involving serosa, not involving serosa. Stage 2 was any cervical involvement. Stage 2 was any cervical involvement. Remember this was cervical stromal involvement and not glandular involvement. Stage 3 as we have uh, seen has 3 stages. Uh, stage 1A, stage 1B, 1C and A is A for adnexa that is spread towards the adnexa. B is below that is spread to the vagina. And stage C is the lymph, the lymphatic spread. Then there was stage C1 and stage C2. C was pelvic and this one was paraaortic. And then there was stage 4. Stage 4A is local metastasis like your bladder and bowel. And stage 1B was distant metastasis, distant metastasis. So it was as simple as this the C endometrium classification. So what were the shortcomings of this simplicity and what was the what was the problem with this classification? How the new classification came? I will take you through it. So remember we had two types, right? We had two types. Like one was having a very bad prognosis type 2 and one was having relatively good prognosis the type 1 and we had also the high risk high intermediate low intermediate low risk groups which would determine the treatment so ideally when we are staging a disease the staging should be determining the treatment but here in endometrial cancer not only staging but then other complex things those are particularly histopathology related were governing the treatment and we had two distinct types. We knew that there are two different distinct types, type 1 and type 2, but still the staging system itself did not have any influence of this knowledge, right? So with this, let us uh, come to the revolution that was already happening in endometrial cancer and that is the molecular classification. So just like your breast cancer was uh, recently, I mean not very recently, was revolutionized by the entry of ERPR and HART2 new and from suddenly uh, staging and apart from staging the luminal classification became important. So like that the same thing has happened to endometrial as well. So I will not go into the details of the molecular classification but the molecular classification has two, uh, four types. 
so this is poly mutated poly is a gene that is that can be seen in sanger sequence poly is a gene that can be seen in sanger sequence so either poly mutated or poly wild type so if it is poly mutation that is a type and then there is MMR deficient that is mismatch repair gene deficient, NSMP and P53 mutated, P53 abnormal. So P53 abnormal is considered as the worst type, P53 mutant is associated with the worst type whereas poly mutation is associated is the best prognosis. Also how this manages, how this changes treatment if we find there is poly mutation till stage 2 there is no need to give any adjuvant still stage 2 there is no need to give any adjuvant no lymph node involvement there is no need to give any adjuvant no chemo no radiation nothing okay that was the beauty of poly mutation like one stage 2 uh, endometrial cancer and we are ready to give vaginal brachytherapy and uh, if it is histopathological grade 3 endometrioid type we are ready to give EVRT even so if we know that it's a poly mutated case by doing a Sanger sequence which is costly by the way so there is no need for any adjuvant therapy on the other hand p53 even though it is the worst prognosis it will always have a significant benefit from adjuvant chemo RT, chemo radiation. So P53 cancer, whatever stage it is, even it is a stage 1, grade 1, P53 abnormal will always, always, always get a significant um, survival advantage from chemotherapy. P53 abnormal cancers, even though are bad, they are chemosensitive and adding chemo to it increases survival benefit significantly. So, with all this knowledge coming up and uh, changing the management, actually the FIGO existing stage was not corresponding to the treatment and that's why we had to come with the new staging. So, let us see what is the new staging is. So, uh, let us write stage 1A, stage 1A2, stage 1A3. So, previously we had 1A and 1A had what? Tumor either limited to the endometrium or less than 50% myometrial invasion. Now, see how if the same thing is incorporated. So, 1A is non-aggressive histopathology, non-aggressive histopathology, limited to a polyp, limited to a polyp, or limited to endometrium right so what is 1a2 1a2 is non-aggressive variety with less than 50 percent myometrial invasion less than 50 percent myometrial invasion right now what is 1a3 1a3 is low grade that is grade 1 or 2 tumors which is low grade endometrioid histology low grade endometrioid histology limited to the uterus or even ovary so see how this thing is downstaged right so previously low grade endometrioid but involving the ovaries would be upstaged as stage 3a now it has become only 1a3 because the 1a3 treatment i mean 1A3 or 1A kind of treatment is sufficient for this kind of spread and the stage 3A kind of treatment is not necessary. We were over treating and that was causing significant comorbidities, chemo related comorbidities, radiation related comorbidities. So that's how it got downstaged. Now let us see what is 1B. 1B is the same what was there previously. 1B is more than 50% myometry invasion. So, this is also non-aggressive, non-aggressive, more than 50% myometrial involvement, 
with focal or no LVSI. That is no significant LVSI. Lymphovascular stromal involvement. Now comes a stage which we have never seen before. That is 1C. Right? This is 1C. And this is the aggressive histology. Aggressive histology like our serous carcinoma, our clear cell carcinoma. Right? So, this is aggressive type and only limited to polyp or endometrium. So, a higher histology, if it goes into the myometrium, even if it is less than 50%, the studies have shown that they have worse prognosis and they need a treatment which is more than our stage 1 treatment. Right? Stage 1 treatment was simple hysterectomy. Now, it has been shown that the type 2 cancers, the aggressive histologies, if they are and they undergo simple histo uh, simple hysterectomy the recurrence rate is high and the survival is less so that's why now we have come up with a classification that aggressive variants only if it is limited to a polyp or endometrium then only it is histopathology i mean uh, the stage 1c otherwise it will not be classified as any myometrial invasion it is not stage six. we were under treating as like we were over treating in this group we were under treating the type 2 cancers type 2 any myometrial invasion now stands beyond stage 1 and what stage we will see in the next slide so let us see the next uh, next thing so, stage 2. Stage 2, what was it previously? Any cervical stromal involvement, right? Now, it was no subclassification. Now, we have stage 2A, 2B and 2C. So, let us see what stage 2A is. Stage 2 is again non-aggressive, non-aggressive with cervical stromal involvement, with cervical stromal involvement and Stage 2B is, last time we have seen that 40, there is less focal LVSI. Now, if LVSI is more, we knew all this. If LVSI is more, then we have a worse prognosis and we need more extensive surgery and more adjuvant treatments, right? So, that has been reflected in the new classification. 2A is what stage 2 was. Now, 2B is, again, non-aggressive type. Non-aggressive types with significant LVSI, with significant LVSI. So, LVSI is incorporated. So, previously we were aware that LVSI is a significant factor, but we were not treating on the basis of LVSI. So, that was somewhere patients getting under treated. So, now we have a new stage, stage 2B, which is non-aggressive histopathology with significant LVSI. And what is stage 2C? Yes, you have guessed it correct. So, this is our aggressive, this is our aggressive histopathology, this is our aggressive histopathology with any myometrial involvement, right, with any myometrial involvement, any myometrial invasion. There is no less than 50%, more than 50% when it comes to the aggressive histopathology like our serous, all our type 2 cancers. So, now type 2 cancers if it is limited only to the endometrium at stage 1 that to C and if it is into the myometrium any portion of it then it is stage 2C. Now let us see what has happened to the stage 3. So stage 3 was stage 3A that is spread to the adnexa stage 3b that is stretch uh, spread to the spread to below and stage 3c which was lymph node involvement right so let us see where does stage 3 stand now so stage 3a has become 3a1 and 3a2 and stage 3 1 is same Spread to the adnexa, the tubes, the ovaries. But remember, spread to the adnexa means to the reproductive organs and reproductive organs alone. 
here there is a important catch except the 1v3 definition that is if it is low grade endometrioid involving till the ovary and not beyond the uterine serosa then it is 1v3 so this group with ovarian involvement we were over treating so now it has gone to 1v3 rest everything with the spread to the tubes and ovaries is stage 3a2 and 3 uh, sorry 3a1 and 3a2 is spread through the subserosa subserosa of the uterus or serosal bridge or serosal bridge right so that is stage 2 this 3a2 that is 3a2 new thing okay now coming to stage 2 b1 and b2 so b1 is metastasis to vagina and the parametrium the parametrium stage 2 is metastasis to the vagina or the parametrium stage 2 b1 this is this is sorry 3 b1 and what is 3 b2 is very important it is pelvic peritoneum pelvic peritoneal disease so peritoneal disease which is limited to the pelvis now this is a new stage this is an absolutely new stage so we saw 1 c we saw 1 c and 2 c which is for the aggressive variety the type 2 cancers and that was something new and this other such just the things changes made on the existing thing now this thing is absolutely new pelvic peritoneal disease is now staged as 3b2 now let us see where does stage 3c stands so 3c doesn't actually change it is 3c1 3c2 this is pelvic and this is para aortic so practically no change but to increase a bit of complexity now it has come 3 c1 1 and 3 c1 2 and similarly 3 c2 1 and 3 c2 2 where 1 is for micrometastasis micrometastasis of the lymph node which is less than 2 millimeter whereas 2 stands for 2 stands for macro lymph node metastasis macro lymph node that is more than 2 millimeter and remember this is 2 millimeter and this is not we are talking about sub centimetric nodes and more than 1 centimeter 1 centimeter or more nodes right this is a very clearly defined 2 millimeter cutoff so if nodes are less than involved nodes are less than 2 millimeter it is micro and then 3c11 roman capital uh, roman 1 and if it is more than 2 millimeter nodes more than 2 millimeter nodes then it is a macro metastasis so the stage remains 3c1 if it is pelvic lymph node but subclassified as roman numerical 2 right so this is something new Now coming to the stage 4, now you can, you can um, think that what change will happen in stage 4, stage 4 was pretty straightforward, stage 4A, 4B and A was local metastasis and B was distal metastasis. So yes, there has been made a significant change, whereas stage 1A, stage 1A is the same, local metastasis, bladder and bowel, bladder and bowel. Stage 3C is distal metastasis. Now there has been something new that we have already discussed that there has been introduced a stage 3B2. Stage 3B2 which was pelvic peritoneal disease. So this one is peritoneal disease. Peritoneal disease beyond pelvis abdominal peritoneal disease beyond pelvis so this is classified as 
metastasis level of stage 4b and 4c is distal metastasis right and remember from stage 3 onwards from stage up to stage 2 we have seen aggressive non-aggressive from stage 3 onwards there is no aggressive non-aggressive uh, once it is stage 3 then we don't talk about the histopathology except while we are defining stage 3a we are excluding the stage 1 something that we classified as stage 1a3 right so there is one thing but beyond stage 3a2 there is or stage 3 1a1 maybe they, from stage 3 basically to simplify there is no mention of any histopathology now once when when we were defining uh, this stage 3 c1 and c2 the c2 definition was para aortic though it was implied it was never clearly mentioned that the para aortic only up to the renal vessels even though when we are doing our surgeries our para aortic lymph node dissections our upper limit will be the renal vessels we would clear nodes up to renal vessels so that was implied but was not clearly mentioned now this classification 2023 clearly mentioned that para aortic lymph node till the renal vessels till the renal vessels classify as stage 3c2 so anything any lymph node beyond renal vessel any para aortic lymph node beyond renal vessels beyond renal vessels becomes stage 4c right so that's what uh, to summarize this is the simple simply i mean i could as much as i could simplify the new classification this is it and you might ask that i have mentioned that this figo staging takes in takes account of the molecular staging and the type 1 type 2 histopathology so where is molecular staging right where is molecular staging so molecular staging comes as a separate entity and i'll show you how so suppose this is a case of 1a2 this is a case of 1a2 so non aggressive 1a2 means non aggressive myometrial invasion less than 50 percent now if it is non-aggressive type myometrial involvement less than 50 percent now if it is still p53 abnormal if it is p53 abnormal then it will require chemo right on the other hand if it is pole mutant sorry on the other hand on the other hand if it is say stage 2a non-aggressive with cervical non-aggressive with cervical stroma if it is like that and if it is poly mutated it will not require any adjuvant therapy if it is poly mutated it will not require any adjuvant therapy so stage has to be mentioned with the molecular classification like 1a2 m pol e mute right that's how you have to write the state now or like stage 2a m p53 abnormal right so this is how molecular classification has been incorporated into the figo 2023 uh, staging of ce endometrium hope this helps and uh, does not create much confusion and i wish all of you get accustomed to this new classification because this is the biggest change of 2023 and uh, this will very soon come in your exams right so thank you for listening and let's play the game. Best wishes.